Av Kelly is a name that if I mention today and just like Av, it will create negative connotations because we know that the man has just been incarcerated for crimes that I do not want to mention. And if I was to start this podcast by a different angle, probably reading these words, and here they are, there are miracles in life I must achieve, but first I know it starts inside of me. If I can see it, then I can be it. If I just believe it, there is nothing to it. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. I see me running through that open door. I know the tune is already forming in your mind and in your spirit of that famous song. And today in the podcast, I do not want to dwell on the negative of R. Kelly. I want to dwell on those two words. I believe. You better be a believer. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Friends, there is so much to speak about those two words, I believe. And before I can go far, let me just say this. Whenever those words are mentioned, the world stands on the precipice of change. Whenever the words, I believe, are mentioned, the world, and maybe your life itself, it stands at the precipice of change and maybe even revolution. My question to us today is this. What do you believe in? What is that that is holding your belief system? Everything you do, believe me, consciously or unconsciously, it is always going to be attached to a belief system, something that you believe in or something that you are standing up for. That is what is dictating what you're doing in your life i'm not talking about religion brothers and sisters i'm not talking about spirituality here i'm talking about humanity the human soul has been made to believe to operate on belief we have the spiritual angle of our lives and then we have the empirical the felt angle listen the felt angle the practical angle for lives is always going to be dictated by the content of our belief systems you believe that you are poor you're gonna stay poor carter gordon woodson in the miseducation of the negro said the famous words that have been quoted the world over he said if you can control a man's thinking you do not have to worry about his action when you determine what a man shall think you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do if you make a man feel that he is inferior you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status for he will seek it himself if you can make a man think that he is justly an outcast you do not have to order him out of the door he will go there without being told and if there is no door his very nature will demand one that is the power of belief ladies and gentlemen today i guarantee you that the things that you are doing are going to be dictated by what you are believing about yourself about the world we have these world views for us we are africans that is a belief system for us we are poor that's a belief system 
Africans can never amount to anything. Africans cannot be already. That is a belief system. Any belief system, any action that you see in the results we see in our lives on a daily basis are going to be connected to what we believe about ourselves, especially about ourselves. Belief is so powerful, ladies and gentlemen, that unconsciously we follow what we believe. Sometimes we even die because of what we believe. And sometimes, flipping the coin, we succeed because of what we believe, despite, in spite of everything that is against us practically in the world. But the belief system cuts across the crap, cuts across the obstacles, climbs the mountain, sees things done mildly because of the belief system. The most important thing, I believe, it is not knowledge. The most important thing is belief. Knowledge is good. It is okay. But you can have all the knowledge in the world. But if you do not believe in it, it is not going to amount to anything constructive in your life. Today in the podcast, we are discussing something that is of absolute importance. Quite a bit goes on behind the scenes before anyone anywhere can believe. Contrary to popular belief, it does not start with us. I believe belief starts from the realm of the divine. God orchestrates his purpose through us when we choose to believe. I am not talking about religion. Talking about humanity. There is no human being on the face of the earth who doesn't have the capacity to believe you believe you're going to be alive tomorrow right and that's why you prepare for it that's why you go to sleep because you believe you're going to wake up and someone will tell me ah that's biology and so on and so forth it is not biology because you know at the same time there is no guarantee that you're going to wake up. But you do believe. On a daily basis, God drops ideas in our minds and in our hearts. And he gives an invisible capital of passion. He gives this invisible, invisible capital of attachment and passion. Attachment to this one idea. We become like a pregnant woman. You cannot deny the pregnancy you cannot deny that you're carrying something inside of you it so happens because you're carrying it because of the words i believe when someone says these two words i believe the world stands at the precipice of change at the precipice of impact and the precipice of an a possible revolution a young lady pulled me outside after a talk and asked me I read somewhere that there is a difference between living and existing. But I don't know what it means. I can tell you this. If you do not have a belief of anything that has a passion and an attachment, something outside of putting food on the table and clothes on your back, you are not living. You are existing. Because anybody can live a life of putting food on the table and clothes on their back. You are existing. You are not living. I firmly believe that we all need to have a set of beliefs that define who we are, define what we are passionate about, define what we are attached to, define what we are willing to dedicate our the best of our ears to some belief system. And I am not talking about religion, ladies and gentlemen. So what is your belief system? What is, what is the content of your belief? This is so great. It's an invaluable spiritual capital. And let's, let's just do this exercise. Take some time and take a blank of paper, blank sheet of paper at the, to- at the top. Write the following words. Those two words. I believe dot dot dot. And in one sitting, generate at least 30 statements connected to those two words. I'm telling you. That is power right there of a revolution in your life in this decade and beyond. Because every time a human being writes those two words or says those two words, I believe you can almost always be guaranteed that there is 
divine energy backing it up there is passion backing it up there is attachment backing it up and anything can be moved to make sure that the belief is affected however once in a while though through the divine inspiration we download this massive idea that is just beyond us at times we come across insurmountable odds that something inside of us starts defying the odds you know what that is it is a belief system forming then all of a sudden we say i believe but even when all this is happening there's something that they they call the cynic there's a cynic inside of us immediately when you say such things to ourselves the cynic inside of us rises up and starts to tear that dream aside and apart even in microseconds it so happens that it can be aborted and this is where we have to be crazy enough yesterday we talked about being stupid crazy and careful enough to make sure that the dream and the belief is not aborted this is where we have to be attached and detached at the same time attached because we are pregnant with it detached because the execution of the resources to back up the dream is not entirely up to us the reason as to why very many people do not believe is because they think that everything related to the execution of the dream and the belief is up to them no it is not entirely up to you someone wants to build a university and you have never even built a kindergarten be detached to it but be attached to it at the same time have the belief and have the passion and i'm not just talking about having these things from the top of your head no i'm talking about things that are inside of your heart how many beliefs have been aborted in the heart You want to do something in your spirit in your heart you want to write a book you want to build a, a podcast you want to write a magazine a publication you want to talk to kids and form some organization that is going to help the children it is in your belief system but you're so attached to it to be detached to know that it's not entirely up to you to come up with it but today in the podcast we are talking about the belief There are very many people who do not have any inkling of a belief. Those are the guys that I'm addressing today. Any dream worth achieving has its beginning. Friends, it starts not in the realm of the flesh and the blood, it starts in the realm of the spirit and I am not talking about religion. It starts in the realm of the spirit. When I say I believe I can fly, ladies and gentlemen, I see myself building a billion dollar app. It does not mean that I will fly tomorrow or sometime in the evening today. It does not mean that I have it all figured out. It doesn't mean that I have all I have to do is to spread my wings and fly. It doesn't mean that I will succeed at the first attempt. Huh? It doesn't mean that I will not be scared and I'll not be clueless. He said they had someone say next says that he's proud of what his organization does but he, they're not perfect. They make mistakes. But how they address those mistakes is what excites him. When I say I believe it doesn't mean that I will not fail at several attempts. It doesn't mean that I will not be disappointed. It doesn't mean that I will not be defeated or not, you know, be defeated in beating a deadline or so. It doesn't mean that I have all the resources needed for me to start. When I say I believe, however, this is exactly what it means. It means that I acknowledge the impossibility, and that is why I am resorting to believing. If it's possible right now and everything that is in place for we to be accomplished is there I don't need to say I believe When I say I believe it means that I am on a dare It means that I am on partnership with the divine and the universe to do the impossible It means that I'm accepting the privilege to be the conduit through which the divine is dreaming and to realize the dream of the divine it means that i'm agreeing to oscillate between the reality of the dream and the utopia <laughs> huh and the broader facts 
it means that I'm becoming pregnant and I'm becoming a parent of a child, not necessarily a human being. It means that I am attached and my time on earth will heavily be spent in building the dream that I believe in. It also means that I will be defined for ages to come by my flights or by my dream. What am I running away from or what am I believing to accomplish? Perhaps the greatest instance in the recent past when someone said i believe was in the 1960s when john fitzgerald kennedy delivered the now famous moon speech and i've told you about that on this podcast a gazillion times you can watch the speech anywhere on the internet just google the moon speech and you'll be treated to moments of i believe he said but i think we are going to do it And I think we must pay what needs to be paid. I don't think we ought to waste any money, but I think we ought to do the job. And this will be done in the decade of the 60s. But it will be done. And it will be done before the end of the decade. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked, why did he want to climb it? He said, because it is there well space is there and we are going to climb it john f kennedy see he did not whine he did not complain he did not dwell on the history he did not engage himself in politics he did not talk of impossibilities he did not talk of possibilities his speech i believe is one of the most electrifying speeches of all time All he did is to dream, to say, I believe. He recognized the magnitude of the dream in terms of time, in terms of resources, and he dared. When JFK delivered that speech, he galvanized a whole country, a whole nation of people so much so that if you ask the butler and that story has been going around, what are you doing? He will tell you, I'm sending a man on the moon. That is what believing does, ladies and gentlemen. It galvanizes people. It inspires people. It brings the impossibility to action and to reality. When a human being says, I believe, the whole world stands at the precipice of change. And I don't know what it is that you're believing today. It doesn't matter how long it will take. But it will materialize because you've said you believe. Every dream, ladies and gentlemen, has a gestation period. John F. Kennedy's dream took more than nine years to come to fruition and he did not see it, by the way. He was assassinated before that dream came to be. Scriptures tell us this. It says, this vision, this message is a witness pointing towards coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. And it doesn't lie. If it seems to be slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come at the right time. See, time does not allow me to document all the ancient and modern heroes who chose to believe against all the odds. The likes of Abraham Lincoln, all my all-time favorite American president. The likes of Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, Steve Jobs, Ben Carson's mother, and even Barack Obama. Someone in the scriptures said, I could go on and on, but I've run out of time. There's so much more that I can talk about. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets. Through acts of belief, they toppled kingdoms. They made justice work. They took promise for themselves. They were protected from lions, from fires, from swords, from thrusts. Turned into disadvantage. They turned disadvantages into advantages. They won battles. They routed armies. Women received their loved ones back from the dead. There were houses. There were those who, under torture, refused to give up and give in and go free, preferring something better. Resurrection. Others braved abuse and whips and, yes, chains and dungeons. We have stories of those who were stoned soon into two, murdered in cold blood. Stories of vagrants wandering the earth in animal skins, homeless, friendly, friendless, powerless, 
in a world that did not deserve them making their way as best as they could on the cruel edges of this world because they believed that is my addition so what is your belief what do you believe in today ladies and gentlemen let not this day let not this month end before you can document what you believe what is your belief system what is the set of your belief system what is the content of your belief what is in there that is what is going to determine how this year is going to be actually your years on life on earth have been determined by the content of your belief system we have been tagged we are it our time is now the men and women of history have gone but they are men and women of like passions there is nothing so strange or special about them that separates us from them save from this thing i believe and that is why i am writing that is why i am speaking about it today to encourage each and every one of us to say those beautiful things those two beautiful statements i believe a singer sang and said there is a dreamer inside each one of us wants to believe there is a dream to believe in there is still a hope after hope is gone we can be one another's and show the world there is still a dream i dream friends to build life signatures universities of a kind all across africa i believe to impact at least 1 million people with a message of hope with a message of purpose with a message of productivity to make sure that at least 1 million people know the reason as to why they were born to deploy their purpose and to make this world a better place that is my belief and friends that belief dictates my action even as i speak what is yours sit down write it internalize it document it clarify it and run with it until tomorrow bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.